All right, guys, welcome back to our new episode of the Invisible Practice Podcast, episode 19. And today we will be talking about the difference between practice and rehearsal. Over, how are you today? I'm I'm completely fucked. No, I'm joking. <laughs> lost my wife, lost my kids, my yeah. dog died. Well, basically, when you ask someone, you know, how are you? Actually, at least in in in, in England, they don't want to to listen to the answer. You know, it's like, how are you? And they they go, you know, they <laughs> they live. So actually, if they want to talk, if you want to talk, you only have to say, I'm not okay, you know, and <laughs> then you're going to start the conversation. Completely fucked. Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> nice. Oh, great. Nice. Bye. <laughs> happy for you. Why not? <laughs> See you later, happy, happy... <laughs> Or not, because if you oh, die. No. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm okay. I'm really, actually really, really well. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I'm very into this subject today because I think it's something very interesting and that not many magicians have talked about it before. Uh, I remember like Eugene Barger talking about this in the past in his, in his book, uh, the, per- the Performance of Post Magic, I think. He have he has like some essays mm-hmm. about it in there, but yeah. Uh, in my opinion, like I don't know what's your what are your thoughts on, on it, but in my opinion, the main difference between practicing um, and rehearsing, the main difference is on the on the finality of the of the of of the mm-hmm. thing, you know. So the perspective. Uh, it doesn't have to be especially the meaning. I mean, like they are different words, of course, different activities, but mm-hmm. they have like somehow they have like the same, the same. They are looking for like the same goal, you know, like to to master something, to understand mm-hmm. something. But yeah, I, I, I'll I'll try to give you later like my perception on it. But just one thought. Uh, when I'm rehearsing, mm-hmm. I try to to not not to over rehearse, but I can practice as much as I as I mm-hmm. want or as I need, you know. So why, why is that? Why do you try to not over rehearse? Yeah, because I remember like some musicians saying like, "Hey." Uh, Paul McCartney, hey, play Hey You, and he's like, I, I would prefer to 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 play a different song. Why? Because they they have played this song like many 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 times, you know. So mm-hmm. with with a rehearsal is the same. Like rehearsals should be like something different to practice in the in the conception. Like you know the structure, you know everything. So let's put all the parts that you have practiced like separately, mm. put it together and be conscious on the main thing, you know, in, mm. in, in the in the in the whole act. But if you over rehearse mm. when you do it in front of an audience, every time you lose, you know, like this fresh air that you have like the first time. Actually maybe you sorry. Yeah. Bored also? Well maybe, I don't know. It's I, I don't think it has to be like in my opinion it doesn't really have to do with getting bored that, that, mm-hmm. but, but it's an option in my opinion it's more about if you have a if you're in a couple and you tell your your partner you know like every day like 50 times per day I love you it loses the, uh, the meaning right mm-hmm. but if if you say just once, it, it, it turns into something like more valuable, you know? Mm. So rehearsing should be like something interesting. For example, it's different if you have like a goal. Well, I remember mm. when I was preparing like competitions, I used to rehearse like the, the routine eight times per day. <laughs> but all of them were different, you know? Really? And how, how did you do that? How did you make all of them different? Yeah, so for example, of... 
if you if you write in a paper like uh, like eight lines like these are mm -hmm. eight points mm -hmm. you should write like the first one and the last one should be the act okay like like the the performance like having audience in front okay mm -hmm. so you go with two okay then the the second one and the one before the last one okay mm -hmm. in my opinion and what, what i used to do I was focused on what I wanted to share. So I I wouldn't need to do like like the whole thing. I, I was doing like the whole thing, but pay more attention on my language, on my expressions, my my communication, blah blah. And then the rest of them paying attention on the angles, paying attention on the blah blah. Why? Because depending on your needs, you are going to, to rehearse you're going to be focused on this on this and you can maybe forget many other aspects so mm -hmm. when you're rehearsing just for example you have to go to france and french isn't your first or your second language and you have to do your thing in french you are going to to have to you're going to need a, a rehearsal of just the script you know just talking in french mm -hmm. but but once you know how to do it and one once you you have done this you have to rehearse the same but mm -hmm. pretending or or even doing the whole thing mm -hmm. so if you say like i'm going to do the whole thing but i'm going to be focused on on the french for example mm -hmm. maybe you can make mistakes but you know like like you know how to palm you know how to how to do transfers or whatever but and the pass any technique but you are you know like you're focused on the on the thing so i i always prefer like do the first one and the last one in general and then mm -hmm. going to specifics you know like actually like a like a boomerang structure you know you start with this da, 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 and then you go back you know mm -hmm. so in my opinion it would be like general uh, like the experience like expression blah, blah, mm -hmm. techniques okay and details mm -hmm. and then you rest a little bit and then details then again uh, aspects like techniques structure, blah, blah, blah. then the communication and then general again mm -hmm. but that's my, my perception you know and then with practicing is different uh, but but i would like to 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 listen to you about your perception you know, your perception on it. yeah well because like for me what i started to notice is um at one point i saw a shift in my magic right so at one point i I was always like very big into close-up, like really a close-up guy. And when I started with magic, I would always perform for people at my high school. So I can just remember like going every day into the high school and just doing magic for people day in, day out. So I was getting very well honed in like how to perform magic at that moment because I just performed it for at least three years every day. Um, and then, of course, when I went to university, like that changed a bit. But um, what I saw and what I still see is those things I used to do back then, they're really like solid and really good. Even though I'm not so much behind the magic anymore, or I get a bit bored with like the techniques, they're still like very good, right? And then I got to a point in life where I got like much less time to perform because I'm working a job now. And also when I went to uni, it was like you're partying, doing a lot of other things. You don't always want to perform. Um, but then at one point, uh, we started the show in Amsterdam, the Amsterdam Magic Show, uh, became part of that. And I started to do parlor magic, right? So we can also discuss that in another episode, like how to do stuff for the parlor and how to make stuff visible on the stage. But what I notice now is that those things I do on stage are like freaking solid. Like, of course, they can like improve still a lot. There's still many theatrical techniques and other things that can apply to it, but still like the presentation and the effect is really solid and it always gets like solid, good reactions. Where what I started to notice with the new things I'm doing in close up didn't necessarily get those reactions because of course you're a bit nervous when you do new things maybe. But also uh, I saw the biggest difference was those close up things were under rehearsed. You know, I just didn't rehearse those things enough or not at all, I just like did the same thing I used to do back then when I performed every day was get a concept for this thing and then just work it out in performance. 
which is yeah. not a bad idea in general if you if you have the opportunity to do restaurant gigs or to just perform everyday solid like maybe something 10 20 times it's not necessarily a bad idea to have this trick and have this concept and to then keep performing it and like that you will see it starts refining itself but that same thing you can see in rehearsal so like for me really the biggest difference and eugene burger talks about this as well is that practice is like um practicing the routine and the, the techniques together right so if something goes wrong in the practice you you just start over or if something isn't smooth you maybe take a break for five to ten minutes and you're going to work on this one thing you're going to keep doing maybe the stop change until you can nail it like smoothly Whereas with a rehearsal, what you're going to do is you're going to have your um, your story or your script or your uh, presentation. And you're going to present this together with the effect as if you're doing it for another person. Which also means if you screw up or fuck up, uh, you, you, you have to, to fix it. Fix it in the rehearsal, which teaches you a lot about your magic. Um, but another thing you will start to notice is that you might start with one idea and then as you're rehearsing it, like this is evolving in the same way as if you would do it for other people. Of course, like the, the way it evolves is a bit different because uh, you might make mistakes or do certain things for people or say certain things, you see a reaction. But you already start to see that you can start with something with a script and you can like, the concept becomes simpler at the same time when it becomes like um, more com comprehensive for people so people can understand this concept better in a simpler way and there's less fog and fuss around the whole thing yeah uh, which is why i think it's it's important and a good way to to write it and on writing script i'm i'm, I'm not by far not a professional writing does i'm like i would say i suck at writing scripts i hate doing it but um what i noticed and it's also a theory my friend timon krause talks about a lot he has this triangle which is like um play rehearse or play write rehearse and this this keeps going right yeah. so you play something then you write down the script then you rehearse it <laughs> and then you keep going and playing is literally what it means it means play with it which is also what you can do in your rehearsal you have that idea and you're just going to keep working on it keep playing with it until it becomes a solid good thing um, and then you can write it down and i feel that for when i'm writing something like a script it works much better if i just go with this concept rehearse it like a few times and then already if i want to write a script on it that script will be much clearer yeah it's yeah it's i think we can go as well with the with the with the words i mean like with the the meaning meaning of the words for example my opinion like our, our rehearsal it's like a, a an active practice mm. let me explain it's like putting in context something i remember like when i was when i was um play i used to play football actually i was quite quite good playing football i have some problems on my knees and i had to quit but 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 yeah we, we used to to have like a very a proper team football team and we used to call like let's practice some some tactics no you know like mm -hmm. you you have to shoot the ball and someone has to run and the other one has to to kick the ball with the head or whatever you know mm -hmm. but when when you are on the on the on the pitch, you know, and you're playing a football match, you know, for American soccer, <laughs> soccer match. Um, football. The name is football. Go on. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Football. When, when you're there, um, you for example are going to shoot the ball from the corner, you know, and everything is prepared and you know how to go. You you, you mm. put up your hand or whatever. The the guys on the radio says go whatever it was a rehearsed at least in spanish i don't know it was like a rehearsed um thing you know like something mm -hmm. that was rehearsed you don't say it was practiced it was mm -hmm. rehearsed why because everyone understands everyone understands like the situation was was put it into a 
uh, blackboard or whatever, uh, it was rehearsed, practiced, mm. yeah, but but rehearsed. It was put in context, mm. you know. Um, for me, with magic, is the same. Um, like, if you are in context, you have to to be consequent with, with with this, you know. If you make a mistake, as you said, but not only this. For example, do you know? Do people know how long their act is? Because. I think, thing... many, I think many people not like I, I consequently know how long it is like exactly how long it is which is I don't remember where I read it but I once when I was very young very young and when I started with magic sort of like the first two to three years I was I read this thing about um, doing acts and that a true professional knows exactly how long his act is and if you if he says he's gonna do 15 minutes He's not gonna do 14 he's not gonna do 16 he's gonna do 15. yeah and and i don't say that you have to be this consequent because sometimes it's just not possible sometimes you get audience interaction you get certain stuff and it's not possible to to do the 15 minutes you're gonna go over but but for those things you want to keep in mind it's always better in any case to do 14 than 15. and you should freaking time your act because um like we're, we're doing this magic show in amsterdam it's a great show but i've seen it so many times that people say i'm gonna do 15 minutes <laughs> and they're like doing it 25 or 30 and i'm like i, I once had to run the show and it's people where everyone was like a great amazing performer but we had multiple people who were on the stage for the first time and didn't time their act and it just went over <laughs> freaking 45 minutes and then the headliner had to cut his act by like instead of doing like half an hour he did like 15 minutes to, to just like s sort of like minimize the damage on the schedule and on the theater which which is like which is a shame so i think for anyone also like time your act and time it in rehearsal don't time it just doing the techniques literally imagine you're practicing for people and if you ask someone a question, literally fake the conversation. So literally, like if you, oh, what's your name, Steve? Okay, great, Steve. How are you? How, how are you doing today? Blah, blah, okay, Steve, where are you from? You know, like sort of in your head, also try to get their answer to it and take that time. Because if you're gonna rehearse it, also without that, you're, you're definitely you're doomed to go over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've lived this you know like many times like performing with other people um people that don't know how to how to do it i mean it's going to it it's going to be something you know uh, determined by experience and um yeah basic experience like performing over and over again um mm. yeah yeah and rehearse at home you know like and it's a very good point also you make like experience because also, don't expect if you rehearsed your act at home, it was 15 minutes and you're not doing a silent act, that it will be 15 minutes on stage, because very likely it will be 12. And that has nothing to do with your act, but just that like if you're performing this in the beginning, you're less probably going to be a little bit less relaxed. Maybe you're not, but if you're like new on a stage, you might be a bit less relaxed. You might rush a bit more through things, pay a little less detail to certain things. And, you know, it's just... <laughs> no shame it's great that you notice this but please notice yeah. it and then work on it and you can only improve like you can either shoot it as, oh man i suck i'm so bad i'm uh i went so like i w went five minutes uh, under time da, 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 da. or you can see it like oh great i went five minutes under time but at home it's always 15 minutes why is this and then find that problem or why it is and find a solution for it and that's how you will improve yeah. Well, there are also like two concepts very important, like the, the Italian rehearsal and the, and the do you do you know the concept? I don't know if you call it like that. No, but 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 it just sounds like Italians are always late, such are Spanish people. So <laughs> you're racist, guys. <laughs> Invisible race racism. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, man. Like I used to study yeah. with these Italians, and it was always like. Okay, guys, let's meet at nine. And then, like, at quarter past nine, you get, like, a message. 
hey guys i'm just i'm just taking a shower now see you soon yeah look look i uh well you know me like uh i'm busy i'm usually busy but but when i meet people i'm always you know before the time because i'm uh, i'm i'm like that and everyone in spain like almost everyone when when they are meeting people, not not going to to work or something, but when they are mm-hmm. meeting people, they are late. But yeah, the, one of the concepts is like the Italian rehearse. Um, the other one is like a, a rehearse with with audience in front mm-hmm. of an, an audience. The Italian rehearse is like, for example, you have like a gala, okay, and you are like five magicians and and the conductor, okay, for example. Mm-hmm. So the Italian the Italian rehearse is mainly for music uh, lights um the order and the the mic okay and the, the sound okay mm. so basically the conductor appears and he says introduction so he says like the first the first line and the last one before the first guy so he says uh, rico villon and people uh, like the the director is clapping in the audience they open the cordon. One one of them appear for one side, the other one goes for the other. So you are just doing like the 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 essential things, you know. Like, um, you don't have to do the whole thing. You say like, okay, now this music, these lights, blah blah. Yeah, the they're just one. doing the transitions. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's something that people mm, apply on on galas, but not not with themselves you know mm-hmm. for example in my case I, I i love like doing like italian rehearsals because it's like yeah i have to switch the deck i have to and i apply technique text uh, i have uh, like communication and the other one rehearsing in front of an audience i remember like the first times doing performing like my competition routine in front of the audience they were rehearsals because we had to try like the methods like the mm. methods were like the novelty of the methods uh, always scares you you know because you don't know if you're going to fool or not uh, and you have to switch this or you have to hide the other thing and that's very important like you feel like everything is like a performance and actually when you start to do a, something new you're rehearsing this in front of people and that's mm. important as well that's mm. why you you first showed this to your magician friends, then to your girlfriend, uh, then to to a friend, then in the family on the Christmas dinner, uh, and then you go to the stage to do it. Well, you know, like doesn't matter the other, but 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 you try to to perform every time, you know, in a less comf- comfortable place, you know. But you start it for the most comfortable situation. Yeah, and another another good good thing with that is like if you want to do something for stage or well, stage is a bit tricky and that's what i'm gonna say but more like parlor if you want to do a parlor effect you can see very often a lot of them also work close up so you can also just rehearse it close up yeah yeah do, do you have any any memory uh which one has been uh, what's what's been your your worst uh experience rehearsing not and, and practicing like both of them like the the hardest uh, thing for you to practice was i don't know on the rehearsing like i don't know if you know what i mean i, I i'm being like very it's difficult to say because i don't really perceive things as in terms of difficult or non-difficult yeah. and like today like i recently wrote a blog for uh, danny goldsmith for his uh, website on like yeah the limitations of difficult of difficult sleight of hand between brackets like um which you can read from today on uh, monday um basically i don't perceive sleight of hand in that sense that we say this is difficult or this is not because that's like creating a limiting belief and creating a construct for you because we're not all the same we don't all have the same background neither in sleight of hand and magic as before that um so what might be easy for me might be difficult for you but at the moment i'm trying to like got a bit into manipulation and i'm struggling at the moment still with like i can back palm a card but then to transfer it and make that completely invisible consistently 
uh, which on the stage definitely would be a bit easier, but I want to do that close up. Yeah. Um, but but if I would have started with doing a lot of manipulation when I got into magic, that that would have been one of the first things you learn. And those type of moves would be much easier to do. You know. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, I also remember when I was practicing, but those things times were fun. I was practicing eight hours per day, push through shuffles and and bottom deals and second deals. Yeah. And I used to be shit in the beginning at those moves, but they were fun to practice. Actually, since the so, moment that you, that you you know how to do something and you can do it, it's like, how can I say it is difficult if I know how to do it and I do it well, you know? <laughs> yeah, but that's the other thing. It's like you you notice, like I notice the same on guitar or on bass or with anything yeah. else that something feels a bit difficult when you start. But if you have keep having this concept in your mind, oh, this is a difficult thing to do, then in your head, that's always going to be the difficult thing to do. Well, if you do it enough, you can do it with ease. It doesn't, it's not difficult anymore. You can just do it. Which is also the coin act I do on stage. It's like um, at the end of my act to show my hands empty, I use the transfer that Fernan uses in the five coins in glass. And he does it at the beginning, you know, to transfer those five coins from like the finger from the palm into like the um, down type of palm. I mean, I do it at the end of the act to show the hands empty. So there's a bit more heat on it. And Every time, like, like also Aliash, like a friend of mine, he said he saw it for the first time and he was like, like, heard a difficult move is going to come. And he just looked at it like, what? <laughs> Where was the move? Where was the struggle? He literally said, like, I thought it was going to be difficult, but then it, then it didn't look like that. I was like, of course not, because I've spent like countless hours, countless days doing this with five coins. So doing it with three coins is definitely going to be simpler. Yeah. And it's not going to be difficult anymore. It's like this movie where Vin Diesel is performing, you know, and I think the, the name of the movie is like Nakaran Guys or something like that. And they are in a, in a, in a bar and they mm -hmm. are like the badass of the, of the village there, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing is like one of the main characters, you know, have as a friend this guy Vin Diesel you know he's like super strong and uh, he says his theory is like if we if we call Vin Diesel and this guy punch <laughs> the badass guy from, from the village we are going to get disrespect you know so so they are there and Vin Diesel stands in front of the badass guy and Vin Diesel says 500 and the other one says 500 watts, motherfucker. <laughs> and he spits. Uh, uh, and Vin Diesel answers. When I was a kid, I was counting, you know, I was uh, uh, taking in mind how many fights do you need to consider yourself like a bad guy and someone dangerous, you know? And 500 was the number of fights that I had to, to have to, to know that I was bad enough. Something like that, you know? So it made it made me think, you know. I know it's a very weird story that I'm telling, mm -hmm. but I remember rehearsing like some techniques, like deals, false shuffles, uh, diagonal pound shift. If you if you are with the deck of card of cards, once you have learned, you know, like. Uh, the position of the fingers and everything you only need to to practice it you know to practice this you only need to to create like a mechanism you know it has to be something mechanical um and you can be on the bus on the tube watching tv whatever and you can be like doing it once all the all the all the all the uh with all the cars of the deck you know and once you have done this during during some months, then you are going to be with your friends. All of you are going to be drunk. They are going to say, show me a trick, whatever. Uh, instead of doing like using yeah, they, the kicker. Uh, they they turn into furnace all of a sudden. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so once once you feel like, like that, you're going to, to have it like something mechanical and you're going to, to, to perform this for the first time. Um, um yes the same with transfers palms uh, 
I don't really have like memory of of rehearsing the like practicing or rehearsing the palm light. Like I'm going to take a seat and I'm going to. No, I don't have this. I, I knew that, that I was a, a kid and and the cards didn't fit on, in my hand, mm -hmm. but I remember like performing palms, you know, everywhere in front of anybody, you know. Um, since I was like a, a fucking kid, you know, like. Well, I actually, I actually do have memory of like very recently of like practicing palms, you know, um, <laughs> and this was mainly because oh my god, this deck is a mess. Okay. Um, this was mainly because like I noticed that when I would do like a palm from the bottom, I would have like like sort of like a split second where this would happen. Yeah. Like very literally like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, what I mean, yeah. And I noticed at one point like I was practicing in front of a mirror and like analyzing it because I used to do like I used to do this palm in performance quite a lot. Mm. Like like and but then all of the time this would happen, right? And I was at one point analyzing and I realized it's like the job of these fingers to push this card in like mm. up so that this hand doesn't have to grab because it was like sort of like this finger here like the fourth the third finger trying to grab onto the card so applying pressure while these were still relaxed which would then create that so i figured out like if you properly like just push it in and then these fingers like the thumb just goes down to grab it here and here you know it's into a palm and you don't you don't have that you, you, you're not gonna have that same flash or very mm. minor um just me practicing in front of a mirror for and I think for a week. Yeah. I remember for example practicing uh Herman Pass. Well actually mm -hmm. the invisible the invisible pass is a little bit different. Because one of Herman is like 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 this everything is on the same plane, you know, like parallel. And the invisible one you have to 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 put it like in diagonal, you know? Uh I used to, to perform like many uh, the classical one I haven't performed the classical, uh, the classic pass uh, in a long time. I mean, I sometimes I do it at home. But I used to have like, it's bad that I say that, but but my classic pass was, not is, was almost perfect. Like many people used to ask me like, what do you do? You know, like, mm -hmm. and I have, I, I had to write like some, I have to, to write some, some essays for for people to to learn how to do it you know but a friend showed me his details on the invisible pass and i didn't i wasn't as fast doing it as with the classic pass you know so i remember you know like trying to find you know like the the, the right position of the fingers you know mm -hmm. um even like adding some some new some new shit, man. Sorry. Some new details on it, you know, like, uh, like the the ASOS of of diamonds, you know, and and actually just just the squaring. You don't have to do to do anything, and you can, you know. Mm -hmm. It is the past, actually, but but I just palm the the car the car later. So you have like new the, mm -hmm. the fingers and here as well. And you just do like the the whole movement and, and doing it like very slow, you know. If you want, you can. If, when you're here, you can palm it and then you can make it appear or whatever. But but yeah, that's one of the techniques that I remember that I, that I had to to rehearse, you know, like uh, over and over again, just to to get like the the right timing. Because when when you have to to do it, it's like yeah, I, I'm for example, I, I'm here, and I, I know I know what to do, you know. Mm -hmm. but but how to do it well just just relax you you are you're here you just relax move your hands like squaring on the on, and it's done you know you don't need to do mm -hmm. anything yeah and the classic uh, the classic one i don't know if if i didn't do it in a in a while you know and with the cable here <laughs> so sorry but yeah i, I flashed a little bit sorry. but but yeah i used to be like very very soft you know no, not anymore. But and now, if you can see the camera, but mm -hmm. yes. But I prefer just to to receive the card, the two of, of spades, just leaving it on the deck. Yes. Do you remember your card? Yes. No. Okay. Perfect. And then when, when I was to to score the the deck, mm -hmm. but I flash here because of the the angle. 
Oh yeah, the they, angle is horrible. You have a horrible angle at the moment. Yeah, but now you have maybe the, you have you have the toddler angle. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah, totally. Maybe for for this angle, it's bad to, to do like the, the invisible, right? Mm. So 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 yeah, um, yeah. With many other techniques, I don't know. Maybe the diagonal palm, you know, shift. Uh, it's, it was different in this case, yeah. But, yeah. but that's also a thing. Like uh, what I like, for example, is that um, Richard Turner talks about this. Like he talks yeah. about like when you're practicing a technique, like you would do like a second deal or whatever, and you would first just try to get that deal down, right? So you would just sit down and you would focus on the mechanics of it and why is it working or why is it not working and keep practicing it until you can get it to like a decent rhythm. And then he said, and then it's just like time to like freaking drill those muscle memory and just, just watch a movie, do whatever you want to do, listen to something and just like, sit on the couch and just unconsciously just keep doing second deals in your lap or onto whatever. If you're on a desk and you do it onto the, um, you know, onto your desk. And then if you've done that for a while, you're going to go back to the table with a mirror maybe and you're going to see how it looks and maybe what's wrong now. And you're going to fix that and then you're going to go back to the couch, <laughs> watch a movie, chill, do something and you're going to keep practicing like this. Because some, some, some part of it is just like at one point you can do the technique, but you just like you lack a bit of s smoothness or having done it enough. Yeah. And then maybe just doing something else can really like help you. Yeah, I remember as well. I think it was like Miguel Munoz from Spain, you know, mm -hmm. he's an amazing magician. He was studying with Luis Garcia and Gabriel Moreno. And they were like very into deals, uh, pink accounts, fire shuffle on table, like riffling, mm -hmm. you know. And they used to, to be in the darkness and they used to put like a um, handkerchief on top of the of, of the deck and mm -hmm. with blind eyes and with the handkerchief on top of the deck they used to grab onto the handkerchief do cuts like 26 and 26 and do a, a riffle fire shuffle so it was like the the way that they used to practice you know and rehearse so i think it was miguel muñoz who once asked to i think it was to gabriel like gabriel i for me, it's very difficult to master the fire shuffle. Why? Can Can you give me any any tip, any advice? The answer was memorable. The answer was, you don't master the shuffle because you don't master the fire because you're trying to shuffle them one by one. You know, and and he was like, of course, because I have to shuffle them one by one. <laughs> and, and he was like, yeah, you you're making me a question the typical question that a person that uh, that doesn't understand anything is asking you know like you have to to first understand you know like the the thing it's a shuffle that's all mm -hmm. but if you think of shuffling one by one it's not going to be ever a shuffle so the external life has to, has to be like you know a, a, a place mm -hmm. on the on the practice as well because sometimes we, when we rehearse something or we, when we practice something, it loses, you know, like the, the essence of the thing, you know, like it isn't the same like doing an Emsley and showing the cars, you know, showing mm -hmm. the cars is, is more like, yeah, showing and you can break the account or, or, or whatever you want to do, you know. So, so that's important as well to, mm -hmm. to be conscious about it. Yeah, I don't know. No, I mean definitely. It's um, but that's also where where rehearsal comes in, you know, because you're putting context to something you're doing. So if you're talking about that Elmsley, you're all of a sudden looking like, okay, is it just like an Elmsley? Um, so am I showing them the identity of the cards very carefully, or the red cards, or am I casually showing the cards? Uh, like, what purpose does this count have in this routine? You know, and then all of a sudden you, you are creating like more context around it, which is also why the rehearsal helps. And maybe in your presentation or your story that that, that thing gets a different context. Same technique with different context. Yeah. There's uh, something interesting about the context as well. Like, there's a video 
of the artist, you know, Danny the artist. Um, basically, they were like many magicians invited to a convention in the north of Spain. Um, the uh, the owners of the restaurant where they were uh, having lunch, you know, because they they had to do like a road trip to to go to the to the convention. It was in the north, so they stopped to, to have lunch, and the artist is doing magic, you know, and suddenly the artist leaves the, the deck on the table, and I he uh, and he says like, which one was uh, what was your card? And the spectator says like the Queen of Hearts, for example, and he asks, uh, but first before we snap the fingers, Gea to Miguel Angel Gea, you know, can you check the selected cards on top? And many of the magicians would have taken, you know, the, the deck and prepared something or this card. <laughs> you know, yeah, I did like this. No. <laughs> it was perfect. You know? So that's something that we sometimes forget, you know? Like, mm. you learn a technique and every time that you have, for example, if you learn a pawn, oh, I have to hide a card. So I have to use the palm. Well, depending on the context, maybe maybe you have to hide a palm, and the best way to hide a palm, it's like maybe I always put this in example. You know, like uh, we used to do the, uh, this kind of challenges. Like you have to do a, um, a piece of magic, but you mm-hmm. can't use the double leaf or the the double cut. You know, like the, the other cut. Yeah, yeah. Down, uh, this kind of things. You know, and that's awesome. Or you have to do the travelers without the using the palm what? Or, or the card across. Well, using the double lift is also something that you can... Mm-hmm. So, so it was nice, you know, like this kind of challenges. And um, the example of what I said about Miguel Angel was like, hey, I took the... Uh, no, it isn't. It's okay. That's like the best thing for this occasion, you know, for this moment. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, the... Those are my thoughts on it. I don't know if you want to to add some. No, I think that's uh, that's a good thing. It's like a nice but sweet podcast like this. Yeah. Um, simple to listen to for once. Yeah, I I think we are going to have guys. We'll we'll have very soon like some people here that we are going to invite. We can't say the names yet because we are still talking about when and how and who. But yeah, there are many people that have contacted us. To I'm gonna invite well, Alvaro Babel Perez. Who is this guy? I don't know. I already is a model. Mm, also, he's he's similar to me. I, I know myself that it's like Alvaro Perez Verbel. Yes, uh, he's similar. <laughs> he's, but he's sure like your. He's like you, but like yeah. a shadow. <laughs> okay, right. Peter Payne. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, some people contact us, and we want to contact some people to 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 do the podcast. So if you like this, please uh, subscribe, um, press like, um, and the, the bell to to be informed every time we we post a video. And please contact us saying like, "Hey, I'd like you to talk about I don't know." chickens on farms whatever we will try to find a way to, to do it but please suggest us some some so the magic community is like a chicken farm oh that's a good one <laughs> let's talk about it for next time you know cool. that's a good one okay thank you so much guys you finish good. talk later guys and uh, if you also like if you like to please share it with all your friends and uh, we'll see you next time Uh, Follow on our OnlyFans. Bye-bye.